Okay, this is the P2 paper from October 2020. It's question number seven, which is a trig identities question to start off with. And then the second part is a simple trig equation. Let's have a look at part one. Part one is asking me to show that tan theta plus one over tan theta is identical to one over sine theta cos theta. So what we normally need to do with these questions is to work out, am I gonna start with the left hand side and try and make it equal to the right hand side or am I going to do vice versa and start with this side and try and make it equal to that side well looking at this particular one um, we can make a start on it we know that tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta that's one of the two identities we know so in other words tan theta plus one over tan theta let's call it left hand side I'm going to start with the left hand side and make it equal to the right hand side the left hand side becomes sine theta over cos theta, because that's tan theta, plus one over tan theta. Now you could write one over sine over cos, but actually I would expect most of you to understand straight away that if we're doing one over a fraction, you can just turn the fraction upside down. So that's my first step for my left hand side, is to do that. And it's fallen perfectly. What, what I always wanna do with these trig identities is to get to a uh, situation where I'm adding fractions. We do sine times sine, cos times cos, and sine times cos here in order to multiply out that fraction. So if I'm gonna do that, sine times sine is sine squared, cos times cos is cos squared, all over cos theta sine theta. And then we also know our second identity is the sine squared plus cos squared is equal to one, isn't it? So in that case, we get one over cos theta sine theta, which is the same as the right-hand side. So I've taken the left-hand side and I've shown that it's equal to the right-hand side. Proof done, perfect. Okay, there's part one. Part two then, we have the trig equation and the trig equation says, 3 cos squared 2x plus 10 is equal to 1. Uh, what I do need to do is to focus on the fact that if that's 2x plus 10, I'm going to need to change the set of values that my answer is going to be working out between. So I do that first of all. I would start off with 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 90. And then say, right, okay, so 2x, that's going to be 180. That's still 0. So 2x plus 10. That's going to be 190, and that's going to be 10. So when I get my final, um, so halfway down when I get my uh, inverse cos I'm going to have, I only need to consider between values uh, from 10 to 190 when we're doing it. So if we do that, then let's actually just start, start solving the equation here. We've got, what was it? 3 cos squared 2x plus 10 is equal to 1. Well, this is just simple rearranging at this stage, isn't it? So cos squared 2x plus 10 is equal to a third. So cos 2x plus 10 is going to be equal to plus or minus uh, the square root of a third or 1 over root 3 if you want to do it like that. So if you inverse cos of one over three, what we've got to be aware of, again, just really quickly remind ourselves of the cast diagram, all sine tan cos. If I've got my values being between uh, 10 and 190, when I do inverse cos of um, 2x plus 10, I'm going to get that 2x plus 10 works out to be 54.74 degrees and then 126.26 degrees. This is 54.74. This one here will be 126. 0.26 and then there are no other values which are going to fit within that uh, range there so if that's true we're going to get 2x plus 10 is equal to those which means that 2x 
would be 44.74 or 116.26. Um, sorry, it's 25. Apologies there. That's just me not reading off my calculator properly. That should be a 5 there. And that should be a 5 there. Um, yeah, so X is going to be half of those values. It works out to be 22.4 or it works out to be 57.6 and both of those let's tidy that bit up there as well uh, both of those are as it asked to one decimal place okay hopefully that's a fairly straightforward question makes sense